Hello, Pacific Coast Watchers. Welcome to another episode of the Operations Brief. I'm your host, Rich Long, coming to you from the Pacific Coast Watchers Intelligence Center. On this week's episode, we're watching the Russians conduct a live fire exercise near Alaska, and the Chinese, well, they're trying to keep all the fish. There's a lot going on this week, so let's go to the map. Uh, the first, the most recent story here was uh, from yesterday, October 1st, uh, and it's an issue of a uh, Chinese fishing boat uh, that came within 11 miles of uh, the uh, Taiwanese shore. Uh, the fishing vessel was uh, uh, intercepted by the Taiwanese Coast Guard, uh, and it was instructed to stop, but it tried to run. Uh, and eventually, in the process of trying to get away from the uh, Coast Guard cutter, uh, the fishing boat rammed the Coast Guard ship, uh, causing uh, some light damage. Uh, it was a broken rail, a broken window, and apparently a light fell off the ship, but nobody was hurt, thank goodness. Um, at that point, the Taiwanese Coast Guard was able to conduct an opposed boarding uh, and arrested 17 people. A uh, few interesting notes with this was that the boat was equipped with improvised armor and deliberately aimed at the patrol vessel's pilot house. Uh, an improvised armor, uh, by the looks of it, it had tires running around the bows, uh, uh, the bow, and uh, had some steel reinforcement uh, put onto it. And with this kind of thing, this is what you see with the maritime militia ships. If, if you've watched the maritime militia video, um, that I put out a while back. Uh, this is one of those things that uh, you see either, in this case it's improvised, so this was probably a privately owned fishing boat. Um, there's a rumor that's floating around that the Coast Guard cutter did end up firing on the fishing boat. Uh, I've heard this from uh, 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 at least one source here on YouTube. But honestly, at this point, I don't buy that. I don't see any corroboration from any of the statements out of the Taiwanese government. And quite honestly, we haven't heard anything out of the Chinese government uh, in response to this either. Uh, so I'm sure that's coming down the road. So next up, uh, we go up into the Arctic and into the Bering Strait where we have a Russian live fire exercise that's been going on. It started September 22nd. Uh, the Russians announced it, uh, which is exactly what they're supposed to do. It's in international waters. It's not, uh, you know, it's not encroaching on U.S. territory in Alaska here or anything. Because, uh, of course, here's Alaska, here's Siberia. And uh, this is the Bering Strait. And the southern group here, they've got two groups that are up there uh, uh, practicing. Uh, the southern group is two cruisers, including the Pacific Fleet's flagship, and an Oscar-class submarine. Now, uh, uh, an Oscar-class carries cruise missiles, land attack cruise missiles. Uh, this is a live fire exercise, and they're firing at targets into Siberia. The primary purpose is uh, uh, to test... Uh, to, to get the crews experienced in firing uh, cruise missiles. And there's also been an anti-aircraft mission with MiG-31s flying out of Siberia, um, uh, out of one of the air bases there, and making attack runs on the uh, vessels. And, they're, of course, the vessels are uh, simulating anti-air attacks back at the aircraft. Uh, one thing that's interesting to note with the Southern exercise here is, is that uh, first time we've seen it in, in, in quite some time is a mobile coastal defense missile batteries uh, are involved and they're simulating attacks on the fleet and these are the K300 uh, variants and what these are, are truck mounted anti-ship missile systems uh, so it's just interesting to see them out and about uh, up to the north in, in the uh, Chukchi Sea and I know I'm butchering the name um, there's a northern group uh, with three corvettes, which are just small vessels, um, and several uh, IL-38 uh, ASW planes, anti-submarine warfare planes, and these are an old Russian copy of our uh, P-3s. And uh, they're out there uh, uh, practicing on how to hunt submarines. I would argue probably they're in the route 
uh, that the Oscar uh, in that Southern group is using. Uh, and my guess is they're trying to hunt the Oscar, or there could be another submarine up there they're using as a, a, a target. Yeah, the, the joys of submarine, you don't really know. Uh, and, of course, there's, there's no end date on any of this. So we'll have to watch that and see how it goes. Uh, the U.S. Navy and the Coast Guard are, are observing these exercises. And like I said, everything uh, legally is above board and they're doing what they're supposed to do. Now our next big story uh, is down on Scottsboro Shoal. Uh, Scottsboro Shoal is off of the Philippine coast here. Uh, this, this is Manila here, and so you're about 100 miles uh, off. Scullsboro Shoal is just a tiny shoal. There really isn't much to it. Um, you, you're, it's surrounded most of the way around. There's an inlet here that lets you get into the, the lagoon. And uh, this has been a source of controversy between the Chinese and the Philippines for quite some time. Uh, all the way back, uh, the U.S. actually got involved with it in 2016 and, and negotiated a standoff uh, between the Chinese Navy and the Philippine Navy. Um, it didn't go so well. Uh, the Philippines uh, 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 retreated and left the area. The Chinese were supposed to. The Chinese never did. And uh, uh, the U.S. administration didn't do anything uh, about it. And it's caused some turmoil uh, uh, with our political uh, er, uh, status there. Now, uh, this current incident, um, the uh, Philippine Coast Guard found a barrier on Friday, September 22nd, uh, going across the entrance to the shoal. Uh, what happened earlier was that uh, some Chinese, or excuse me, some Philippine fishermen tried to get into the shoal in order to fish, uh, which they're legally allowed to, and they encountered uh, three Coast Guard boats and a Chinese uh, maritime militia service boat. Um, when the when the Philippine fishermen approached, uh, they were uh, uh, blocked and warned off. And the service boat installed a uh, barrier uh, going across the mouth of the shoal. The barrier posed a, a hazard to navigation and it was a clear violation of international law. It also hindered the conduct of fishing and livelihood activities of Filipino fisher folks, the Philippine Coast Guard said in a statement. Uh, on Monday, uh, they went in, the, the Philippine Coast Guard went in and removed the barrier. They cut the ropes that were holding everything down and, and physically removed the barrier. The Chinese uh, warned the Philippines uh, not to, quote unquote, not to make any provocations or seek trouble. Um, the Filipino forces would dismantle any floating barrier that the China Coast Guard may install in the disputed South China Sea, uh, uh, Philippine Admiral said on Wednesday. Uh, so basically, uh, uh, President Marcos has given his blessing that if there is uh, more barriers uh, put out there, that the Philippine Coast Guard has the authority to remove them. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see what the next step is and to see whether uh, they can get the Filipino fishermen back in there. Like I said, they haven't been able to get the fishermen in in a long time. Uh, the only one that's been allowed in there has been Chinese boats. Uh, so we'll see how that, uh, how that uh, develops. Next up, uh, we move up to the uh, city of Fujian in the province of Fujian in China. Now, this area, as you can see, is right across from Taiwan. Uh, and it's one of the major ports that you expect to see an invasion force uh, if one to, were to occur. This is where it would stage and load um, one of the couple of, uh, of ports uh, in the area. But on September 24th, the Taiwanese government observed a large number of troops um, at the uh, at the port, and some movement of the uh, Chinese rocket forces. Uh, they deployed um, some of their mobile missiles. Uh, also, um, there are 12 ferries, uh, car ferries, that 
have reinforced ramps that can be used in uh, landing exercises. Six of the twelve broke off their commercial routes and sailed down to Fujian. And so with all this put together, there is that we really think that it was a loading exercise uh, where they, they loaded a division of troops onto the uh, um, car ferries uh, just to get everybody practice. Uh, they didn't actually leave port. They didn't go anywhere. Um, there wasn't much involvement from the uh, Chinese Navy in all of this. Uh, all the big amphibious warships uh, were in port, uh, Sands 1. Um, and so you didn't, it wasn't going to, to be anything other than a demonstration and an exercise. Uh, the People's Daily put out that, uh, quote, PLA ground forces, uh, ground forces exercise deters Taiwan secessionists as long range rockets, missiles, and amphibious troops join unusual drills around the island. And the, it says around the island, but we never saw them actually leave uh, Fujian. Uh, as of this point, the ferries are back on route, um, and really, we didn't see a lot of coverage other than the one story from from the uh, um, People's Daily and a statement from the Ministry of Defense of Taiwan. So it's kind of interesting how that went down. Anyway, moving on. Um, we go up to Japan and the Senkaku Islands, uh, where the Chinese Coast Guard, um, well, I'm assuming Coast Guard because the press release said government uh, ships, um, two Chinese Coast Guard vessels that had intruded on the territorial waters off Senkaku Islands um, have left territorial waters uh, Sunday afternoon, according to the Japanese Coast Guard. Uh, they were spotted by a Japanese fishing vessel. The Coast Guard asked them to leave, uh, which they promptly did. Um, now, the Senkakus are right here. Uh, these are very disputed islands. Uh, uh, the China, both the Chinese and the Japanese claim them. Japanese have administrative and legal control over them. Uh, but you can see how close this is to Taiwan. So it's been a little bit of an issue. We've seen uh, in the past uh, Chinese uh, fishermen and coast, guards, coast guardsmen uh, actually go onto the islands and plant a flag um, a few years back. So it's been pretty hotly contested. Uh, but we, we shall see how that's uh, an ongoing issue. Next up is way down in Papua New Guinea, Port Mosby. Um, they had a, uh, uh, they had a PLA uh, Navy training ship. Uh, it was an old Type 71 amphibious landing ship that's used for training, docked at Port Mosley, Papua New Guinea on September 27th for a four-day goodwill visit. They were welcomed by the country's sailors and visited schools and gave, uh, and uh, gave out gifts, uh, baseball caps, uh, uh, look like uni uh, uniform, almost like Navy costumes, that kind of thing. Uh, the vessel carries more than 300 midshipmen from the PLA Naval University of Engineering, the PLA uh, Naval Submarine Academy, and the PLA Naval Aviation University on board. Uh, during the visit, both sides participated in exchanges, open day activities, and football matches. Uh, while, the Chinese em uh, while the Chinese embassy in Papua New Guinea held a reception celebrating the Chinese National Day aboard the ship. Both sides are reportedly in discussion for the reconstruction of a military hospital um, the, uh, at Papua New Guinea's uh, trauma barracks, uh, sponsored by the PLC, while PN... Uh, Papua New Guinea officials are reportedly scheduled to travel to China to sign a um, multi-million agreement for the hospital next month. They've also been trying to form a security agreement uh, in, uh, in order to assist with the uh, defense of Papua New Guinea. This is all very similar uh, to what happened with the Solomon Islands. And so this is definitely going to be something to watch. I know the Australians are, are watching it very closely, and they're making their own moves in Papua New Guinea. 
Um, I'm hoping that the U.S. is at that point, too. But we shall see, like most things. Now, going back over to the Taiwan Straits, we look at the daily grind. And for those of you who don't know what the daily grind is, is pretty much every day of the month, the uh, uh, People's Liberation Army Air Force flies... Uh, combat sorties uh, with intelligence gathering planes, fighters, bombers, really whatever they feel like throwing up in the air at that point. Um, and they fly into the Taiwan Straits, which is the uh, part of the Taiwan Air Defense Identification Zone. Uh, there's also something called the Median Line, which goes right through here and it draws a line. Um, it, it, it's imaginary, it's unofficial uh, by every stretch of the imagination. Uh, but it kind of delineates uh, airspace. Uh, this month has been a record month uh, of activity. There were 565 aircraft detected in the month of September that uh, came out over the Taiwanese Straits, and 225 of those aircraft actually crossed the median line. Now, a bunch were a couple of weeks ago when they had um, the uh, Shandong uh, aircraft carrier uh, sitting off the the east co southeast coast of Taiwan. Uh, they were running air defense exercises and uh, attack profiles on the carrier battle group. Uh, so a lot of flights came from that. But uh, but anyway, it's it's been a record month, and this what this does is it wears down the Taiwanese Air Force because they have to respond. Uh, so this costs some money in fuel, this costs some money in availability of the aircraft because of maintenance and things like that. Um, so it's, a, it's a, like I said, it's exactly what it's titled as. It's a big daily grind. On the Allied side, we move up here to the Sea of Japan. Maybe. I have to do that manually. Okay, um, where the U.S. and South Korea had an anti-submarine warfare exercise. Um, it, was, it, went, it started on September 30th and, and went for three days, uh, so it just finished up. Um, it's anti-submarine warfare training, and it's in response to North Korea. Um, North Korea launched a tactical nucle uh, nuclear attack sub. Uh, the sub carries several uh, potentially nuclear missiles, on it, um, and it can sail up to the coast of South, uh, South Korea and launch. Uh, so this is a capability they really haven't had before. Um, so that that was uh, uh, so this exercise is in response to that. Uh, there were a total of nine ships from the United States and South Korea, um, and quote this is an exercise. This exercise is an opportunity for the South Koreans and U.S. navies to effectively deter re and respond to North Korea's escalating nuclear and missile threats and further solidify, solidify our joint defense posture, uh, said the South Korean Navy representatives. Um, haven't really heard any response from North Korea on those exercises yet. Uh, I've heard some others uh, uh, that have obviously, like Russia, and, uh, ha has said a few words uh, saying that it's a provocation, uh, but yeah, we all know it's not. They started it. Uh, moving on down into the South China Sea a little bit here. Then we're going to get into our fleet updates. Um, there was a joint patrol through the Spratleys uh, between the Filipino and Canadian um, uh, ship. Uh, the a Philippines Navy guided missile frigate and one of Canada's most advanced warships sailed side by side in the West Philippine Sea near Palawan in a demonstration of freedom of navigation and of the permeance of the rules-based international order in the Indo-Pacific region. The joint sail, which took place Thursday the 21st, happened just two weeks after the Philippine Navy ship sailed alongside a U.S. Navy-guided destroyer in the West Philippine Sea, 12 to 24 nautical miles from Palawan. Uh, armed forces of the Philippines Public Affairs Office uh, said that the BRP Antonio Luna uh, completed a bilateral sail in the West Philippine Sea with the Halifax-class frigate uh, HMCS Ottawa. 
of the Royal Canadian Navy on the, the 21st of September. Now, the Ottawa has been involved also in uh, several uh, passages through the Taiwan Straits for freedom of navigation exercises. Uh, so it's good to see the Philippines getting in on this one. And our last uh, event notice here, uh, before we get to ship statuses, uh, the U.S. Air Force held a uh, no-notice exercise. Uh, on September 22nd, the Air Force's 18th Wing conducted a no-notice Agile Combat Employment exercise at Kadena Air Base in Japan to test the base's ability to quickly mobilize units. Uh, airmen participated from bases in North Carolina, Idaho, and Alaska, and they were tested to see if the air base is capable of generating air power at the moment's notice. Uh, with uh, F-15 C and D models, F-35As, and F-15E aircraft uh, were launched and went out to dispersed locations away from the airfield, uh, landed, uh, um, were serviced, and then turned around and came back to Kadena. Uh, now, they mentioned the bases, North Carolina, Idaho, and Alaska. These are all National Guard unit, or Air National Guard units from the U.S., uh, so it was interesting to see seeing all them participate in, in this exercise. Um, you know, it was no notice. That that's a big deal on its own right. Uh, um, I'm an Air Force veteran, and I can I can speak from experience on this. Uh, that that no notice exercises get really interesting really quick. <laughs> all right, uh, so let's jump into uh, some ship locations here. We talk about the. Uh, CV-16, the Lyon uh, aircraft carrier. Uh, she is out of dry dock finally. Uh, if you remember a couple of videos ago, uh, showed a picture where the dry dock was flooded, uh, but she sat in there for two or three weeks uh, still. Uh, the dry dock was flooded August 30th. Uh, but she is finally out, and she's tied up next to the dry dock, uh, next to the uh, ship that they use for uh, 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 to put the crew on uh, while the ship is still undergoing maintenance. Uh, so I'm sure she's still doing some outfitting and isn't quite ready to sail quite yet. Um, CV-17, the Shandong, as of this morning of this recording, which is, uh, uh, let's see, we're September 3rd, uh, is in Sanya in port. Uh, she's tied up there along with one of her escorts. Uh, CV-18, the Fujian, is still in the outfitting dock. Uh, she hasn't been commissioned yet uh, up in Shanghai. Um, and they, they have her tied up. And right across the river, we're going to hit these guys while we're here. Um, this is normally the berth right here for two Type 75 um, amphibious landing ships. I was hoping there would be one here for you to see on Google Earth so I could show you what I'm talking about. But this must have been while they were out way back when. But anyway, as of this morning, uh, there is one Type 075 there, and one of them is out to sea. And uh, I haven't seen any media coverage or anything on, on where she is. Um, the other type, the third Type 075 that the PL Navy has in port as of this morning is uh, down here, uh, and it is in Zishan. I guess is the way you pronounce that. Um, and uh, apparently this is where she's been hiding. Uh, <laughs> I've been trying to find, find her, and I finally found her tonight. Uh, and I look back over several months of satellite imagery, and sure enough, this is where she ties up. This is where she's based, and the other two are, are up on uh, near Shanghai. Um, number 33, which is the one I was saying that is at sea, uh, according to the satellite photos... Uh, and this is just the best you can do with non uh, uh, non paid for satellite service. Uh, left dock somewhere between the September 17th and September 25th, and is still not there. Uh, so she's out uh, doing something. Uh, did check in on all the 
fairies and all the all 12 fairies that have the reinforced ramps are on their normal route as of this evening um, so we'll get into a quick bit about the Allied side here uh, the USS Ronald Reagan uh, is in the West Philippine or, or excuse me the East Philippine Sea um, and it was kind of an interesting story really um, the Ronald Reagan uh, the, the strike group was supposed to leave a while back. Um, they, they notify the Japanese government when they're going to depart. Um, so they would notify them, and then they cancel, and that happened five times, uh, but was always uh, rescheduled. Uh, the Navy was pretty tight-lipped about it until this week. Um, the, uh, they fi the strike group finally left Japan on September 29th, and the Navy says it was delayed for an unspecified mechanical issue and is now in the Philippine Sea. So not sure what happened there. We're probably never going to know what happened there. Uh, but it is, it is quite an interesting story when a carrier battle group can't go. Uh, let's see here. The USS America uh, Amphibious Response Group. Uh, those ships are currently in dock in... in Sesbio, uh, Japan and I apologize folks I'm really going to have to work on the pronunciation of these places and uh, I'll get there, we're getting used to it uh, but the group is in there after exercises in the Yellow and, and Japanese Seas um, let's see and lastly is the United States Coast Guard Cutter Monroe uh, who's been on a deployment for the 7th Fleet all the way down into Indonesia um She's come all the way down uh, into this section of the South China Sea, and she is finally on her way home and heading for uh, her home port in Alameda, California. So that's the roundup of the last uh, two weeks. I'm uh, still working on being a little more consistent with these videos. I've been fighting some technical issues uh, along with some time issues, but I'm going to be uh, putting out another video this week about uh, some channel updates and some things I'd really like to ask of you guys if you want to help. But that wraps up this video, and I hope you like this video, and I hope you found value in it. And if you did, please remember to give us a thumbs up and, a click, and to click the bell to receive notifications about new videos. Again, we're trying to be consistent. I'm trying to get the operations brief out on Tuesdays, and I'm shooting for the intelligence brief, which uh, goes on to uh, different th topics uh, like the maritime militia. Uh, I'm trying to get those out by the end of the week, uh, uh, by Friday. Uh, but we're still working on it. Uh, to continue the conversation and to view other content, uh, please join us on the Pacific Coast Watchers Facebook group, uh, the link will be in the description, uh, which is only half true. I'm new to Facebook, so I'm not allowed to put links, uh, uh, active links, but I'll put the uh, uh, www there like you see on the uh, screen uh, down there so you can copy and paste and, and put it in your browser. Uh, on the Facebook group, uh, we have lots of things going. Uh, I post uh, several, several news articles for a variety of different things from around the world on the, focused on the Indo-Pacific, uh, from the more diplomatic side to the newer web, weapon systems that are being used, uh, to, uh, to deployments like you're seeing in the operations brief. Uh, also, please uh, leave me a comment, leave me some feedback, uh, what you like and what you don't like. Um, like I said, we're still evolving. Uh, I've got a bunch of things planned for this specific show, and, and I'm going to try to get everything else moving on a more regular basis. But anyway, with that, we will see you next week.